Hello, this is John Sims with the Advised Serviceability Engineering Team. This video will cover how to configure IP Office Unified Messaging Service with Microsoft Exchange 2010. Before we dig in, first a few notables. Unified Messaging Service, otherwise known as UMS, provides the integration of Voicemail Pro with email systems through a simple configuration process relying on standards-based either Microsoft MAPI or IMAP protocols. UMS is licensed on a per-user basis as part of the IP Office Power User, Teleworker, and Office Worker licenses. An IP Office user or group can be configured to have their voicemail messages forwarded to the inbox of an Exchange Server email account. Once this occurs, telephone mailbox access can be redirected to that email inbox which is now acting as the new message store for the voicemail messages. And keep in mind that Exchange 2007 and 2010 provide its own methods to use both IMAP and web browsing with Exchange mailboxes. The first step is to prep Microsoft Exchange Server. So you see I'm running the setup again because we need to add the unified messaging role to this Exchange Server. So I've clicked, I've selected that after running setup again to give me an assessment of what's installed. So with the Exchange Server installation files again at the ready, mapped to the E drive in my DVD ROM, I'm going to now go through the setup process, select the unified messaging role, and then click next as you see to start the upgrade process to add the unified messaging role to the Exchange Server. So we click next and you'll see that the installation starts taking place, checking on prerequisites. If you have any trouble with prerequisites, you know, Exchange will tell you what you need to install on that server to then accept the installation of the unified messaging role. So I'll speed up the video here and you'll see this go through a typical installation process again to add the unified messaging role. So we're finalizing setup and it's now completed and we'll select finish at the bottom of the screen and then we'll close out our upgrade. Next we're going into the exchange management console so once that pulls the exchange server and readies itself you see it's pulling information in from exchange we need to set up the unified dial plan on this server now that we've added the unified messaging role. So under the organization configuration container you'll see the unified messaging option and in there we can scroll over and select the new unified messaging dial plan. We're going to give it a name of IP office. I'm going to adjust the digits to four to match our IP office system. But you can That's variable. And then I'm going to give it a country code of one for the United States of America. Then I'm going to add the UM servers. We only have one server in this case in this topology to choose from or one Exchange 2010 server. And then as you see me scroll through the process, I'm then going to see the summary where we're going to add the UM dial plan. Click next and let Exchange work its magic by adding in a, U, a UM dial plan on this Exchange server. This is a something that is required and it's best to match your digits with what you are what your dial plan is on the IP office. Our next stop is into the recipient configuration container and we're going to select the mailbox container and then under all the mailboxes you're going to see me scroll very fastly here for my own name and it's here that you have to enable and you'll see the option there, Enable Unified Messaging, that I'm going to select. You have to enable that for each user that's going to be receiving voicemails into their message store. So you'll see me select the default IP office default policy for this user. Um, you can have multiple policies to choose from. There's no um, need for that in what we do with IP office. Then you'll say you'll leave the settings to automatically generate a pin we'll select next and in this case it didn't detect a um, extension for me because I didn't have a enterprise or public canonical um, telephone number associated with this account 
So I'm overriding it. I have an override there, adding 8006 as my extension. I'll click Enable, and it will enable unified messaging for this user. And again, you get a summary for extension 8006. It's important to note that this extension must match the IP Office user extension. So before we leave the Exchange Server slash Domain Controller in this case, I'm heading into Active Directory Users and Computers, and you'll see I have many different um, user groups, but I, under Users I'm going to add, it doesn't matter where, I'm going to add a voicemail account. The purpose of this account is many-fold actually. It's going to be a intermediary to deliver unified messaging voicemails from the Voicemail Pro server. So you'll see I'm giving it a voicemail name and a voicemail email address. I'll click next. I'm going to set a nice strong password on this account. We're going to set it to not change the password and never let it expire. This account you'll see in a few steps in the future here in this video. We're also going to use this, this very same account as a account to not only run the Voicemail Pro service, but also it'll be a usable Mappy account on the Voicemail Pro server as well. Again, to deliver messages into the Exchange Unified Messaging. So now that I've created the account, I'm going to now set it for mail functionality and give it Unified Messaging option as well. So we're back in the Exchange Management Console. As we pull Exchange information again, we're going to go to Recipient Configuration Mailbox and I'm going to select New Mailbox. So no, New User Mailbox and select Next. Then from an existing user and I'll select Add. We have two users here that I've not added mail functionality to in the domain. And I'll select that newly added voicemail account and select Next. I'll leave all the defaults, of course, that depends on your Exchange configuration. Select Next, so we're adding mail functionality and new Exchange mailbox and alias to this new voicemail user. From there, we now have to make it ready for unified messaging. So now that we've added mail to this user, we're going to right click and select Enable Unified Messaging. So just as before, I'm going to add in the IP Office default policy. And you'll see me select that there. I'll leave all the other pin settings to automatically assign. And just like before, it couldn't detect an extension, so I'm going to add an extension range. In this case, as you see, I start to add 1,000, but instead I'm going to select a extension that's unique and out of the typical range of IP Office, which is 9,000 at least based on the configuration of the switch I'm working with. So there we go. This, this extension for this account could be anything, anything that doesn't conflict or is actually suitable for the dial plan yet doesn't conflict with normal users. So there you see, and, and as you see me walk through, I'm now for Scott Culp, I'm adding enabling unified messaging as well. So just keep in mind to showcase this, that you do have to do this for every user that you want to add um, unified messaging to. In this case, because it could detect, because in Active Directory it had a telephone um, canonical or E164 address, then it would detect the four digit extension based on the unified dial plan. And I've now enabled Scott Culp with unified messaging as well. So now it's time to do some work on the Voicemail Pro server. I've installed Voicemail Pro. It's part of a domain, the same domain for our Exchange environment, of course. We have this made-up domain, Contoso.com, that Microsoft likes to use, that, that I pre-populated. The Voicemail Pro service, when I installed Voicemail Pro, I'm making use of the Voicemail account that we pre-prepped in the domain. So again, you, you're going to see now how this all ties together with this Voicemail account. Not only is the Voicemail Pro been installed with the Voicemail account being used to run the um, service, it was also added to the local administrators group. So the domain account Voicemail was added to the local administrators group. So again, it's all tying together. 
And last but not least, you're going to see me now. I'm going to head into control panel mail. And what you're going to see is I've pre-configured the email account for to have a local MAPI profile on this voicemail pro server. Again, pointing to our exchange, not using cache mode, again, using the voicemail account. So you see how that voicemail account ties it all together back here on the voicemail pro server. It is being used for the Outlook MAPI profile. It is was used to, as a local part of the local administrator group to install voicemail pro and was used as the owner of the voicemail pro service. Now I'm going to head into the IP office voicemail pro client and you'll see I head to administration preferences general which you can shortcut by F9 function key. Under the email there, you see I've enabled Mappy and it's using the Outlook profile. Under the SMTP sender, I've removed, if you have any previous um, setting there of the local server using SMTP port 25 to deliver email, you can remove that. Voicemail Pro configuration is complete. I've pulled the configuration for IP Office. I'm checking on licensing. I'm heading down to UMS Web Services and I double click into it. You'll see that I've assigned my JSIMS mailbox, my J JSIMS user account, I should say, on this IP Office to this license. Now, in the configuration tree under user JSIMS, I'm setting my email address. Then I'm going to check UMS Web Services. And then for my voicemail to email, I'm going to tell it to forward, and that'll thereby forward all voicemails to the Exchange server using UMS. Uh, you see me saving up the config, and the IP Office configuration is complete. Now for a quick demonstration, I've actually sent myself a test message from Sims test on extension 8007 to JSIMS on extension 8006. You'll see I've received this message now with an embedded WAV file into the message which I can play through the embedded player or at the top of the screen. I have a play it phone option which is an exchange option. Um, if you link it back to your hard phone, here you see I select play. It's going to then stream the message to me playing the WAV file. I can select stop. It has full control there. I'm going to now select edit notes where you can add, as you see me type, add helpful notes. And then if you want to save the mail message, you can. So you can actually tag in helpful notes on your saved voicemails. And as you see, you have full control of this in your exchange, in this case, Outlook client, giving you full voicemail control in Outlook. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.